I am joined now by the former mayor's campaign manager, Kevin Sheiky. Kevin, good morning. You have built in the last two months the Trump campaign beatdown machine in social media, in your television ads. You've created a fight. Where was that fight last night when Mike was all alone? Well, you're right. Listen, in eight weeks, we've run more negative ads around the country in battleground states than uh, probably the entirety of the Democratic Party uh, combined. Uh, but listen, we were in Vegas last night, you know, the home of the ultimate fighting championships. And obviously, Mike was given a Bronx welcome, as we say here in New York, uh, to this contest. Um, and we saw the result of that tonight, uh, last night. Listen, I think, you know, Mike wasn't frazzled by it. I don't think fundamentally it changes the dynamics of this race. I don't think it changes the numbers in the race. I think uh, Elizabeth Warren certainly helped her fundraising last night. I'm sure she'll see a tick up in that if she hasn't announced it already this morning. Uh, but fundamentally, I don't really see a change. All right, well, you're trying to run as the alternative to Trump. And yet we saw your candidate get attacked as a billionaire who doesn't want to show his taxes and has a questionable history on race and women. And his answer on NDAs was that women didn't get his jokes. I thought that might be Trump saying that. Listen, I worked at Bloomberg for 25 years. For 25 years, there hasn't been a single charge against Mike in a lawsuit or any, anywhere else about his behavior or anything he said. Uh, NDAs are complicated uh, between employees. Mike is running not the employees who've had grievances against other employees in our company, and I, we're not going to put them on trial. Uh, certainly, uh, Elizabeth Warren wanted to put Mike Bloomberg on trial last night. But compared to Trump, listen, Mike has a record. You know, Mike was not given a million dollars by his father to start his business. His father never made more than $6,000 a year. He went out and built a business. And unlike people on the stage last night, you know, some of whom have served as a single term as a mayor of a small city in the Midwest and others who sat in committee hearings their whole life, Mike Bloomberg has actually run America's largest and most diverse city and done things. He's the national leader on the environment. He's the national leader on gun control. Um, and Mike is the on Trump. Then Kevin... Why didn't Mike say any of this last night? You're not going to be the president. He's the one who wants to be it. He can't bring a campaign team. Yeah, listen, I think, you know, Mike's got to get his legs under him. Certainly he had a better second half of the debate than, than the first. I will admit that. Uh, this is his first debate uh, since he ran in uh, his last election in 2009. It's the first debate in this cycle. Uh, you know, he got his legs quickly in the second half, and I think people recognize that. Uh, he's competing against co career politicians who have spent uh, the entirety of the last year and, quite frankly, most of their lives doing exactly what they saw last night. You know, the problem is, at the end of the day, we can't have debates that are just going to tear this party apart and ultimately not be able to put a candidate uh, before Donald Trump. I, like others, was very disappointed that we did not get a chance to talk about issues like gun control, particularly in Las Vegas, an issue that Mike has led, bringing Moms to Man action in every town to fight okay, for reasonable but then, Kevin, gun restrictions. You were in Vegas. Mike could have made the decision to mm -hmm. run the table. If you say to me, uh -huh. you're talking about career politicians, then which is it? When people just say that Mike Bloomberg is a billionaire and a businessman, you quickly correct them and say, don't forget, he was mayor of the largest city in the United States for 12 years. And last night, Joe Biden on the stage said that Mike didn't do a good job running New York City. And Mayor Bloomberg said nothing. If yeah, he no, wants listen, to compete hey, against listen. the guy who punches, where is it? Hey, listen, Joe Biden talked about my administration. I wasn't aware that Joe Biden had got elected president of the United States, but I'll leave it aside. Uh, Governor Sisolak sat in the front row last night. You know, Mike Bloomberg fought to get Governor Sisolak elected. Uh, I went to Nevada with Mike uh, before Mike ran, and Governor Sisolak handed Mike a piece of paper. Mike said, what is this? And he said, this is background checks in Nevada, and it wouldn't have happened if you didn't help me do it, and I wouldn't be in office here if you didn't help me get here. And so, listen, I think you're right. You know, we need to push back a little harder. Uh, against, you know, people who were screaming about things that they haven't done and get Mike's record out there better than we did last night. But I also think this fight has just started. I think Mike was on the stage for the first time. Mike will be on the stage again in five days. Uh, I think he's got his legs underneath him. And like, you know, listen, I welcome them for the Bronx cheer they gave us uh, last night. But I think that, you know, Mike will be back. And, and I think this is a campaign that right now is just getting interesting. All right, Kev, what you need to do is slow down Bernie Sanders. <laughs> That's the plan here. Do you think yeah. you did that last night? Because it doesn't yeah. seem like anybody's leaving the race. I don't think anyone slowed down Bernie Sanders. I think Bernie had a great night. Um, I think it's a real oddity, to tell you the truth. Listen, Bernie's been talking about a revolution for 30 years. For 30 years, he's been in the United States Senate. He's passed three bills. Two of them were post office renamings. It's a fantasy. It's a fantasy that certainly his supporters, about 30 percent of the Democratic Party, I suppose, buys into. But 70 percent of the party needs to wake up 
and realize that you know we're heading for a real problem here and we have an existential question which is what nominee do we want to put before the voters in November to take on this president and quite frankly I think we need someone that has a record I think we need someone who has fought for that record uh, it may not be as clean as the fantasies that Bernie likes to go out there and promote but it's real um, and it's something that Democratic voters are going to have to take very seriously and, and it's a question that's going to come to them very quickly. I think, you know, Super Tuesday is going to be dispositive, as I keep saying, and I think people are going to need to really think hard about that before we get there. Well, Bernie Sanders is headed to California, ready to trounce all over that state where there's over 400 delegates. At this point, do you truly think he can be caught, given all the moderates in the race? I'll be honest, I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, it really scares me. I think Mike is clearly firmly in second place uh, in uh, March states. Our polling shows that. Public polling shows that. It also shows Bernie Sanders growing that lead over Mike and everyone else in the field. Uh, and there is a real possibility, because California is so big and so early in the schedule this year, that Bernie racks up a lead in that state on Super Tuesday uh, that, quite frankly, is just uncatchable. Um, and so uh, I think this, you know, listen, I think we may know a lot about this campaign very early. It may be that there's not much of a campaign in March after that date, uh, but we're certainly fighting as hard as we can to make sure that there is. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.